What's going on everybody, Kalipas Tech here coming back at you with another video. In this video, we're going to be comparing the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G to the Motorola Moto G Stylus 4G 2022. Now before we go any further, as always, I do want to remind you to hit that subscribe button. And if you want to learn more about either of these phones individually, I will be linking to several other videos about them in the description, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, let's get into it. So with the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G, we're getting a 6.6 inch 120Hz PLS LCD display with a resolution of 1080p, a PPI of 400, an aspect ratio of 20 by 9, and an 82.5% screen to body ratio. With the Moto G Stylus, we're getting a 6.8 inch 90Hz IPS LCD display with a resolution of 1080p, a PPI of 396, an aspect ratio of 20 and a half by 9, and an 84.6% screen to body ratio. So in general, both phones have really good displays, but I would say overall, the Moto G Stylus does have a bit more of an advantage. First of all, at 6.8 inches versus 6.6 inches, sure the size difference isn't huge, but the Moto G Stylus is clearly larger, which tends to be a good thing when you're consuming a lot of content. In addition to this, with a 20 and a half by 9 aspect ratio versus 20 by 9, the Moto G Stylus has a taller and more narrow form factor, so if you're doing something like watching a video or playing a game in landscape mode for example, you're to get a more immersive experience. And if you're doing something vertical like reading or scrolling through social media, with a taller and more narrow form factor, you can fit more content on the screen without having to scroll as much. On the other hand, with the A23 5G, one slight advantage this phone has is that with a 120Hz refresh rate versus 90Hz, the movement on the screen is going to be a little bit faster and smoother. But honestly, this is such a subtle difference, you're probably not even going to be able to tell. But when you're actually using the phones, things might feel a little bit more premium with the A23 5G. But honestly, again, the Moto G Stylus does have a 90Hz refresh rate which is above average anyway, so it's not really going to be that much of a difference. So overall, if you're looking for a phone with a really good display, while you definitely won't go wrong with either phone, I do think for stuff like content consumption, because of the size and dimensions, the Moto G Stylus is a little bit better. Now for storage, the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G is getting 64GB of internal storage with microSD card expansion, and the Moto G Stylus has 128GB with microSD card expansion as well. Now keep in mind, the international version of the A23 does have 128GB too, but this phone in my hand, as well as pretty much any US version you get through a carrier does only have 64. So that being said, in this case, the Moto G Stylus having double the storage does have a significant advantage here. So if you're more of a power user, if you have a lot of apps and stuff like that, then in general, the Moto G Stylus will be a better choice. But that being said, 64 gigabytes, while not being ideal in my opinion, is still going to be at least acceptable for the average user, as long as you're mindful of what you're putting on your phone. So if you're not really that much of a power user, and you just have a few apps and stuff like that, and you're really mostly using your phone for consuming content and basic activities like that, the Samsung Galaxy Galaxy A23 5G is still going to be perfectly fine. Now for security features, both phones have face unlock, as well as fingerprint scanners right here on the power keys, so in the exact same location, definitely a nice spot for a fingerprint scanner. But starting with the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G, let's go ahead and give them a try. There we go, one more time. And there we go. And now for the Moto G Stylus. There we go, one more time. And there we go. So as you can see, real fast and responsive, no issues at all. Both fingerprint scanners did work really well. And again, remember, both phones also have face unlock, so if you want to use that instead, you always can. Now taking a look at the camera setups here, with the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G, we got a water drop notch for the front facing camera. This camera is 8 megapixels. Then on the back, we got a full quad camera setup with a 50 megapixel main camera, a 5 megapixel ultra wide camera, a 2 megapixel macro camera, and a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera. For video, this phone has a max recording quality of 1080p in both the rear and front cameras, so no 4K or anything, but I would say overall the video quality is pretty decent. With the Moto G Stylus, we got a hole punch for the front facing camera. This camera is 16 megapixels. Then on the back, we got a triple camera setup with a 50 megapixel main camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera that also doubles as a macro camera, and a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera. For video, this phone can record in 1080p in both the rear and front cameras as well, so again no 4K, but with this phone it is a little disappointing because the Moto G Stylus 4G 2021 could actually record in 4K in the rear camera, so for whatever reason, and Motorola took that feature away. Whereas with Samsung, although the A23 5G can't record in 4K, they have actually been giving that feature to a lot of their newer A-series phones. Like for example, the Samsung Galaxy A32 5G that came out last year could only record in 4K in the rear camera and not the front. But this year, the Samsung Galaxy A33 5G can record 4K videos in the front camera. So in general, Samsung is actually improving their camera features. Whereas with Motorola, at least with the Moto G Stylus phones, they seem to be taking features away, which is really too bad. But in general, between the two, they have pretty much the same features, including 
including an ultra wide camera and a macro camera. So basically every feature you might typically find in a mid range phone. The only difference is that with the Moto G stylus, the ultra wide and macro cameras are actually combined into one, but that's not really that much of a difference. They're still going to be able to do all the same stuff. Now, as far as photo quality goes, I don't really see a huge difference between the two. Both phones are going to have solid mid range photo quality. So while neither is going to be anywhere near as good as something like a flagship phone, for example, if you're taking photos to share on social media or something like that, and you want them to look nice, but you don't need the absolute top of the line quality, you won't go wrong with either phone. But again, really between the two, they have the same features. And while some people might prefer one over the other, I feel like in general, the quality is pretty much the same. Now, as far as RAM and processor go, with the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G, we're getting four gigabytes of RAM with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 695 5G processor. But keep in mind, the international version of this phone for whatever reason has six gigabytes of RAM instead, but any version of this phone you get through a US carrier will have four. With the Moto G Stylus, we're getting six gigabytes of RAM with the MediaTek Helio G88 processor. Now, one obvious difference here is that with the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G, as the name suggests, this is a 5G phone, whereas the Moto G Stylus, or at least this one in this video, is a 4G phone. So we're not getting 5G connectivity here. So if that's important to you, definitely keep this in mind, because in that case, the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G will be a much better choice. But honestly, in my experience, the Moto G Stylus still does have really good performance, especially for only being a 4G phone. So if you're just using your phone for basic activities like web browsing, social media, stuff like that, then in my opinion, this phone is still going to be perfectly fine. That being said, I did run Geekbench 5 benchmark tests on both of these phones, and here the score is right here. As you can see, there's definitely quite a difference, with the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G having a significant advantage. And in my experience, despite the Moto G Stylus actually having better performance than this might suggest, this phone is still not nearly as fast as the A23 5G. So if you want the faster phone between the two, maybe you're really just going to be on your phone a lot, or you're doing higher performance activities like mobile gaming, the A23 5G will definitely be a much better choice. But again, if you're just using your phone for basic activities like web browsing, social media, stuff like that, and you're really not going to be on your phone all the time, the Moto G Stylus will still be perfectly fine. Now, as far as the battery goes, both phones have 5,000 mAh batteries, so you can expect to get great battery life and longevity with both. That being said though, one difference here is that with the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G, we are getting 25 watt fast charging, whereas the Moto G Stylus is only getting 10. Now, I'm not really sure how many people actually care that much about fast charging, but if you do, then definitely keep in mind, the charging speeds with the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G will be a lot better. But that being said, in my experience, even though the Moto G Stylus only technically supports 10 watt fast charging, I haven't really had any problems with the charging speed either. So honestly, again, it really just depends on how much you care about that feature. In my opinion, fast charging isn't really a reason in and of itself to get one phone over the other, but I guess if that's really important to you, then it's definitely something to keep in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is that with the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G, we are getting NFC, whereas we're not with the Moto G Stylus. So if you like to make contactless mobile payments using tap and pay, then the A23 5G will be a better choice. But in conclusion, which of these phones is better? In general, in almost every way, I would say the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G is the better device. Despite the Moto G Stylus having a couple advantages that I will go over in a minute, the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G has much better performance, 5G connectivity, better fast charging, which make of this what you will. I don't know if that many people actually care about it. And this phone also has NFC as well. Whereas again, the Moto G Stylus, or at least the 4G version of it, unfortunately doesn't have that feature. So in general, if you want a phone with 5G connectivity, NFC, and better performance, then the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G will be a significantly better choice. But on the other hand, again, I do think the Moto G Stylus in general has a better display. Just because of the size and dimensions, it is a pretty noticeable difference. And in addition to this, the Moto G Stylus also has better storage with 128 gigabytes versus only only 64 assuming you get this phone in the US through a carrier and that again is a pretty significant difference. In addition to this obviously as the name suggests the Moto G Stylus does have a stylus as well and while I feel like that's probably not the primary reason a lot of people are buying this phone it's still definitely nice to have considering that feature really isn't very common anymore. But in general despite their differences I definitely think both phones are great devices that provide quite a bit of value for the money. But this concludes my comparison between the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G and the Motorola Moto G Stylus 2022. Again if you want to learn more about either of these phones individually, I will be linking to several other videos about them in the description, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipas Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.